Thank you for joining us for another online sermon from Redeemer. We pray, O oh Lord, as you come to bless us through your word today, help us to be thy faithful people. Help us to follow in the train of those who have begun before us, who have faithfully shared the good news of Jesus Christ with others, and empower us by your spirit to be faithful spokespeople for you, wherever we are and whatever we're doing. O oh Lord, open now our hearts to receive thy word and to go forth to bring forth its fruit. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is that first reading from Revelation 14, 6 and 7. Pastor John Bogenhagen, good German name, isn't it? Bogenhagen. He was the pastor of the town church in Wittenberg, Germany. It had been a church where Luther had preached on many, many occasions. But on this occasion, Pastor Bugenhagen was speaking at Martin Luther's funeral in 1546. He read those words from Revelation 14, 6, and 7. And then he made this statement. Luther was without doubt the angel of whom John spoke. Interesting comment. And it might present to us some questions. Wait a minute. Martin Luther is this angel? Is this a misinterpretation of Scripture? Can this be a faithful understanding from what God says to us in his word? Well, before we make judgments this morning, let us understand what an angel is what an angel does, and in essence, how in a way we are to be angels too. We begin by understanding the term angel is sometimes used in scripture to refer to a messenger of God. Okay, now we've got the created invisible creatures, highest order, the angels. But elsewhere in Scripture, the word is used to talk about messengers who proclaim the good news of Christ. It's interesting that in Revelation chapter 2 and 3, as it uses the term angel about the seven churches, it's talking about the pastors. It's referring to pastors who are angels of the Lord, messengers of God who proclaim the good news. Now, we all know but a pastor isn't an angel, right? We can know that we, the pastors have faults and make mistakes. And hopefully you will understand that even as Pastor Carney comes to be among you. We're all humans. But the concept here of angel, as found in this Revelation passage, is one who declares the message of the gospel. Now, you see, that means that when Pastor Bugenhagen, Bugenhagen says this, it does apply to, Jesus, or to Luther. Luther was one who was a messenger of God, and he was one who shared the message from God. It was Luther who brought back to the world the truth, man is saved by grace alone through faith in Jesus Christ, apart from the deeds of the law. As we look at this text, it goes on and it tells us that this angelic messenger proclaims an eternal gospel. You see, that's what Luther brought back to the church. Remember, if, if you will, that Luther knew a burden that most of us did not know. Uh, I, for example, I was born, a couple of weeks later I was baptized, I was trained in the ways of Jesus Christ, and my folks even said the first word I said was Jesus. 
I was smart, I could say two syllables for your first word. But I was trained, so I don't remember living without the gospel. I know I was without the gospel because the Bible tells me we all come into the world as sinners. But for Martin Luther, he lived many years of his life in intense fear because he was taught you've got to be a certain way if God's going to bless you. And Luther, you're not that way. He lived under the law and was burdened by the law. He has the episode, I was share this with the compromise, where he's out walking and lightning almost strikes him. Now for Luther, this was God coming down and saying, I've had it, Luther. You're not matching up to the way I want you to be. And he was terrified. So he tries to gain God's favor. He goes into a monastery and he works his tail off trying to appease God, somehow trying to figure out how he can gain God's favor. This is a big burden. An extremely big burden. Until one day, he finally got his hands on the word of God, and he said, he's told by God, Luther, it's all done for you. All of your sins are taken care of by God's son, Jesus Christ, who laid on himself your sins and the sins of the whole world. And all of a sudden, Woo! I'm free. I'm free indeed. I can kind of relate to this. I didn't have this in the message, but who cares? The, uh, I had a, a son, and we, he was uh, first grade. And we had been up by my sister for a uh, uh, baptism of one of my nieces. And on Sunday afternoon, my, my brother-in-law has three uh, who has two brothers, and so we're going to play a man's game of basketball, if you know what that means. And so we sh sh told the kids to leave the driveway so we could play the man's game of basketball. Well, in the midst of that game, my son Andrew in first grade, he had his ball roll from the grass onto the court, and so he w went on the court to pick it up. At the same time, was backing up. And I hit his body, and I buckled, and I fell on top of him. And he's laying on the ground. I said, Dad, Dad, I think I sprained my wrist. And it's, the arm's like this. Uh, this is not a sprain. It's a broken arm. I felt so bad. I broke his arm. You go to the hospital, right? Go to the emergency room. How did this happen? Fe so father fell on son's arm. So if it doesn't heal, whose fault is it? Father fell on son's arm. I remember coming back to Bremen, we had staff devotions, and some would say, Pastor Rudy, would you pray? And I prayed, but I thought to myself, I don't want to talk to God. I was overwhelmed with guilt. Satan was having a field day with me. So this is what Luther went through. Satan was saying, hey, you're, but if he, that arm doesn't heal, you're the one who broke it. And it wasn't until one day sitting at my desk, not really wanting to write a sermon. I got, I'm overwhelmed with guilt. And God says to me, Roger, I got one question for you. Did I die for your sins? And I said, well, yes, but. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. God said, there's no but here. It's either yes or no. And when he got through this thick German skull, I knew the relief that Luther knew on the day he read the Holy Scriptures and heard of the saving grace of Jesus Christ. 
For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of good works, lest any man should boast. Luther was set free. Now, having learned that saving work of Jesus Christ through the Bible, Luther spent the rest of his life making sure other people would hear it. He did all kinds of work, from writing catechisms to translating the, the Bible into German, preaching all the time, teaching all the time. He was an angelic messenger of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was sharing with all he could the eternal truths of God's saving grace. Now that leads us to this concept in our text, the term fear, as it appears in our text, does not refer to being afraid of God, but to stand in awe of God. The proclaiming of the gospel is meant to lead people to stand in awe of God, his power and his love, as they see what Christ has done. You see, the Lord isn't only the creator of the universe. He's the one who paid the debt of our sin. We don't have to look back in our lives and say, oh, if only I hadn't done that. We're forgiven. We're cleansed. We're made white through the blood of the Lamb. There's no greater love than we can experience and this love of God in Jesus Christ. Nothing else can set us free like this because it's an eternal gospel with eternal blessings. The message of the angelic messenger leads people to a certainty of heaven. It leads people to fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. The fact of the matter is we don't have to fear death we don't have to fear death at all. Now, it's not natural. Death isn't natural, even though it happens all around us. Death is a result of sin. We were created to live forever. We're going to die because of sin. That's a reality. But sin no longer has power over us. The eternal gospel with Mar which Martin Luther and others have proclaimed assures us of everlasting life in heaven. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. So this friend of ours who died, actually she had been a shut-in for three years with a bad heart, and her husband ministered to her every day during that time. And when I went down there, he said, the only time I lost contact with her was the last day. She started to have, uh, have um, uh, convulsions and stuff. That was the last, only one day. But he said... She's in heaven. She's set free. That's our certainty. Do you understand that? No matter what's all going on in this world, no matter all this stuff with COVID and all this stuff, the certainty is Jesus Christ is our Savior. And through his redeeming grace, we have the gift of eternal life. There's a Bible passage that says that, and the kids always got that wrong. He who believes in Christ will have eternal life. I said, no. It says, has eternal life. We got it right now. Because of Jesus Christ. Martin Luther understood that. Martin Luther was bold and saying, let's get it right, people. This hogwash that's going out there is a manipulation and a destruction of the very truth of God's word. And so he stood up. He proclaimed he was a messenger of the gospel. Now, the word worship interestingly conjures up in us a concept of coming to church. And it's like we set up this thing and we say, ah, I worship the Lord today. I was in church an hour or two. But that's not full worship, you understand that? We talk to the kids, right? I hope they go home. Tell, I would like to know. I'm going to be here next Sunday for the installation. I'll check on some of these parents and see if the kids were angelic at home. 
Okay. But anyway, in Romans 12, what does it say? It says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. God calls us to live our lives in honor and glory to him. Worship isn't Sunday morning. It's our 24-7 life. It's what we do with our lips, what we speak, the errands we do, the gifts and talents we use. That's our worship. And Luther understood that so much when you think about how he talked about it with regard to the, the uh, third article of the Apostles' Creed. Blessed by the Holy Spirit, we are gifted to be a blessing unto others. So Luther understood very well that works are a part of the Christian faith. But works don't save us. Works are a product of our faith in Jesus Christ and the freedom he has brought us. So that leads us to the final thought for today about an angelic messenger. While Martin Luther was an angelic messenger in the 1500s, we are the ones who are supposed to be angelic messengers today. For this purpose, we are here. And for this purpose, we are to live. The gospel is described in our text as eternal, and it is spoken of as needing to be heard by all. If we don't share the gospel, who will? I want you to think about your life for a little bit. Think about the angelic messengers who shared the gospel with you. Janice Brumstead, my Sunday school teacher in fourth and fifth grade. Oh, what a woman of faith who shared with me the simple truth of Jesus' saving work. Pastor Potratz had him for confirmation instruction and he's the one who influenced my becoming a pastor. In part, I'm here today before you because he shared the message of the gospel with me and talked to me about how I could use my life for Christ. We have our parents. They may well be the angelic messengers we had. My dad was a factory worker, mechanic for 35 years in the factory. But I could tell you this, if I ever said on Saturday night, are we going to church on Sunday morning, I would have been disciplined. Because that's what God's people do. They go to church to worship the Lord. He and my mom served in the church in various capacities all their life. They set a wonderful example. They were an angelic messenger. And now God's saying, it's your turn. It's my turn. Today, we receive Christ's true body and blood again. This is not only to assure us and grant to us the forgiveness of sins, but it is to empower us to go forth, to proclaim, to bring the joy of God's salvation to all people. The angel in our text is described as a messenger of the eternal gospel. Based on that truth, Pastor Bugenhagen could say, Luther fits that bill. He was one who proclaimed the eternal gospel message. You and I are enriched with that same truth. I'll share one more little story with you because I think this is important. My first wife, Linda, she was not Lutheran when I met her, and uh, she became a Christian, jokingly. She was a Christian. But uh, she joined the Lutheran Church, and she told me once, she said, you know, the one thing, the most important thing about the Lutheran Church, justification by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. 
That woman loved that teaching of scripture. And she didn't hesitate to tell Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, anybody she met. I'm all right because God and Jesus Christ has declared me forgiven of all my sins and an heir of everlasting life. Brothers and sisters, your pastor's coming next week. Join him in the great mission we have to be angelic messengers. Let Warsaw know Jesus is risen. He's risen indeed. And let us go and be bold in this declaration. For Christ's sake, amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. pray that you are inspired by this message. Please join us again next week for another online sermon from Redeemer.